today and it is for Kevin's friend Amber and Doug they live in Houston and she was just diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer that's a real shock and so um, as you imagine family and friends are really struggling with that diagnosis and the future so that's the, the one quilt um, this quilt it's, it's not uh, black and red, it's black and blue, but um, this quilt is for Andrew. And I'm gonna invite Whitney to come up and talk about why we're giving a quilt to Andrew uh, this morning. Well, Friday was Definitely an amazing day for our family, and I dare say for the whole world, uh, because uh, after two years of raising our amazing 12-year-old son, we were able to adopt him. Oh. And, and uh, thank you, Wendy, and for Jen for being there, and I wish I could have invited everyone. But um, it was just, again, a very powerful moment, a very powerful reality. 
that, um, you know, love wins again, and that, uh, you know, just another proclamation that it's love that makes a family. So we're very grateful for all of you for always defending, you know, what is good and true and beautiful and for supporting our family and helping us to find a home. So thank you. It was just thanks for joining the celebration, but um, we're very grateful for, for our amazing, our amazing boy. So thank you. Love wins. Isn't that just the case? It's quite something. It was Hillsboro too. <laughs> we were in Hillsboro, yep. And it, and it happened. Yeah, God is still speaking. Uh, so, uh, as folks know, today, this weekend, we celebrate Pride. Uh, we celebrated Pride last weekend too. We celebrate Pride every every weekend, really. But. Um, so later on in our worship service, we're going to have some folks come up and read our affirmation uh, that we that uh, was written uh, by some folks before I certainly stepped foot at, into peace. Uh, we're going to re reaffirm who we are as a congregation. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to repeat the opening words I used last week I, uh, that Janet sent me. I. I don't know when I read such powerful words, uh, and um, and they are so important for us to hear and for people to be affirmed uh, and for us to remember, right? That um, this work uh, to be open and affirming um, to welcome people is never going to be over, and uh, we need to remind ourselves. I need to remind myself certainly about that. Um, so hear these words by Kay, and I don't know who Kay is, but by Kay, Rumination on the Death of Pat Robertson. I don't like to think about Pat Robertson going to hell. That lets him off too easy. I like to think about Pat Robertson finding himself in a heaven he never believed would exist, where divine is reading in drag to the children murdered at Sandy Hook and Uvalde, while Edie Windsor and Gertrude Stein drink coffee in the breakfast nook talking politics with Harvey Milk, where Matthew Shepard relaxes by a stream reading poetry to a nameless young man whose family never claimed his body when he died of AIDS, where the music plays loudly, welcoming dancers from the Pulse and Club queue to the floor where they twirl and go with all the murdered trans women of color whose names we never knew where Jesus puts his arm around Pat Robertson's shoulders. Wow. And drapes it with the rainbow feather boa. And gesturing around him, he, he says, come. Meet my disciples. Oh, may it be so. May we make it so. I'm so sorry. Let us stand now in body or spirit as we sing from um, our binder. Number 83, be still and know. From our binder, number 83.
Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, there are days when others do not think we are enough. There are days when we do not think we are enough. Hear us as we voice our doubts and fears. Lift us up. Open our eyes so we might see the possibilities on the path we journey. <clears throat> Create in us the understanding that we are your precious and beloved children and that you hold us close always. It is enough. With hopeful and grateful hearts we pray. Amen. And our response is in the binder, number 25, Be Still and Know. So today I thought we would try something different and have you all be the witness of music. So I hope that everybody picked up a sheet um, that says gather up all of this joy. Some of you, this may be familiar because it was part of the retreats that we did when um, Pastor Wendy was on sabbatical. So we're going to learn it together and then we'll um, sing it all through together. So the first part goes like this. Gather up all of this joy, carry it on your way. Try that with me. Gather up all of this joy, carry it on your way. The next part goes like this. Part is they overlap. So this part, this side will start, 
Gather up all of this joy. And while they're singing joy, you're going to come in with gather up all of this joy. Okay? Let's try it. So you guys are going to start. Ready? And gather up all of this. Gather up all of this. Carry it on. Your carry it on. Share. Gather up all your love. Gather up all of this. Gather up all of this. Carry it on your carry it on. Share it all as you share it all as you make every table. We make lavish pizza. Make every table a lavish feast of grace. Gather up all of this food, gather up all of this food, carry it on your share it all as you share it all as you make every table a lavish feast of make every table a lavish feast of make every table a shining beacon of make every table, a shining beacon of make every table, a lavish feast of make every table, a lavish feast of grace. Amen. I hope you come back next Sunday. We're going to sing this in worship. <laughs> reading this morning is this from Genesis, Genesis 21, verses 8 to 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw that the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac, said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for through Isaac, the offspring I shall name be named after you. And as for the son of the slave woman, I will make of him a nation also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about the wilderness of Bathsheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. And then she went and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. And she said, do not let me look on the death of my child. And as she sat opposite, she lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called Hagar from, he from heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up 
and lived in the wildness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wildness of Parna, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. For the wisdom contained in these holy words, we give thanks. Amen. everyone you meet, even if they don't want it. What seems conceived, bad manners or cynicism is always a sign of things no ears have heard, no eyes have seen. You don't know what wars are going on down where the spirit meets the bone. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Who here has been rejected. You don't have to put up your hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my hand. Everybody's free to do it. Yeah. Uh, who has been rejected for simply being who you are? You are not alone. Rejection is at the heart of the story of Hagar and Ishmael. This was not the first time Hagar found herself alone in the wilderness. If you know your text, you'll know what I'm talking about. We'll go back a wee bit in this saga, a saga that would achieve great ratings on prime time television and, as I understand, uh, would be banned in some states. Anyway, Sarai was getting old and she didn't think God's promise of a great nation for Abram was ever going to happen. She figured she was never going to have a child, so she took matters into her own hands and told Abram to use Hagar as a surrogate to bear a child. Do you all remember this story? Now let me be clear here, Hagar did not volunteer for this role in the making of Abram's great nation. She was enslaved and had no choice. Hagar conceived and, it seemed in Sarai's mind, got a bit uppity. Sarai was mad and went to Abram. Abram told her to deal with Hagar, Sarai did, and Hagar ran away into the wilderness. It was in the wilderness that an angel of God visited Hagar. Where have you come from and where are you going, the angel asked. Good question. Hagar explained what had happened. The angel told her to go back and said God would make a great nation from her child, so great the descendants cannot be counted, the angel said. Now, the angel of the Holy One continued, you have conceived and shall bear a son, and you shall call him Ishmael, which means God has heard. Just a quick aside here. Doesn't that phrase sound familiar? Doesn't it sound just like what... Oh, sorry, that, there is the angel of the Lord speaking. <laughs> Doesn't that phrase sound an awful lot like the phrase the angel uh, who visited Mary said? Let me just repeat that. Now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, which means the Holy One saves. Incidentally, Jesus, too, was rejected, just like Ishmael would be in a few chapters. Anyway, Hagar went back. And today we find her son Ishmael playing with Sarah's son Isaac at a party in Isaac's honor. And you can just tell already, can't you, what's going to happen here. You don't even have to have read or listened to Christine. You just know, just by saying that, what is going to happen. This joy and laughter was simply too much for Sarah. And she went to Abram and said, cast out this enslaved woman with her son. For the son of this enslaved woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. Abram had a little talk with God. God told Abram to go ahead and send Hagar and Ishmael on their way. Ooh. Said that God would make a great nation for Ishmael too. I don't know, like if you're going to question biblical text, now is a good time to start asking some questions. I'm not going to get into that today. Maybe we do a Bible study on this of God. Anyway, so Abram packed up some bread and water and sent Hagar and Ishmael off into the wilderness. Because that's what you do when you don't want somebody around. 
When the food and water was gone, Hagar sat down and wept, sat down away from her child because she could not bear to see him die. The text tells us God heard the voice of the boy, which is interesting because it was Hagar who was talking. I actually sound a bit like D-Ban right now, right? <laughs> anyway, that's a long story. Um, so the text tells us God, uh, God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel returned and said, Do not be afraid. Another phrase we hear again and again in our biblical text. Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy, which is the name Ishmael, where he is. Hagar suddenly saw a well, gave Ishmael, whose name means God, is, God heard, a drink, he get, she gives Ishmael a drink of water, and the rest is biblical history. One more side note, Ishmael was the father-in-law of Esau, another overlooked. Who here has been rejected? Who has been rejected for simply being who you are? Caught up in a system that feels threatened by your very existence. People do not and will not even try to open their minds to your way of being in the world. Don't want to associate with you. Don't want their loved ones to associate with you. Like Sarah, they are fearful that your existence in their sphere will shrink their inheritance, their status, their position, their way of being in the world. And out of this fear rooted in scarcity and ignorance, laws are made to diminish, threats are made to ensure silence, intimidation is used to oppress. A norm is created by people in power that pushes folks who are deemed different and unacceptable to the margins to be forgotten with little more than a piece of bread and a drink of water. And I'm not just talking about our siblings in the LGBTQI community. I'm talking about our Jewish and Muslim, Hindu and Buddhist siblings. I'm talking about our loved ones who are black or brown. I'm talking about women. I'm talking about young people who are struggling to figure out who they are in this world. In this world we live in, in this country we live in, in this state we live in. We see it in our own community as people curse at us when they drive by our weekly Black Lives Matter vigils. We experience it when our rainbow and transgender flags are destroyed. We lament it when laws stand in place that make it legal for a teenager considered old enough to carry a gun, but not old enough to raise a glass because their brains are not developed enough to make a good decision about alcohol. Can you believe that? Just think about that for just a second. A teenager can have a gun but cannot drink alcohol because their brains are not developed enough to make a wise decision. I don't know, I don't know, but it doesn't seem right to me. Our state and country are overflowing with new life-threatening uh, bills being introduced too fast to keep up with, with laws created that destroy people's lives, with rules that force people out. Yes, I am talking about the church. Our system is wreaking havoc with people's lives. People are dying. People are being beaten down, trampled upon, and are dying. And we, we cry out. And it is in our crying out that the narrative changes. God hears our voice. God heard Ishmael and responded, do not be afraid. From you a great nation will live so great they cannot be counted. And so it was. Didn't change anything about themselves. Did you catch that? Hagar and Ishmael didn't change anything about themselves. No changes. They were simply accepted. They were affirmed for who they were and received God's promise of abundance. Precious and beloved children of God. 
just as they were, they found a place where they could thrive. It is the same for us. God is calling to us. Do not be afraid. We too and beloved children of God. And we, we, the community of peace, United Church of Christ, can be a place where people know they are affirmed for who they are and thrive. Where people are free to love and live without fear, openly proclaim their pronouns, worship God in a way that brings life that is not harmful and is not harmful to others. Where people can live proudly in the skin they were born with and not be shamed or diminished by a racist caste system built to do so. Yesterday, I stood in the UCC tent at Pride. We were grumbling a bit uh, because our spot, though relatively shaded, for which we were very grateful, uh, was off the main walking route of Pride celebrators and near the end of the whole thing. We were quite certain we would get very little traffic. People came. Quite a few people came. A six-foot person wearing a shirt that said Diva came through with great gusto. A young person with artfully painted rainbow colors under their eyes was, uh, came with thanksgiving, grabbed a Peace UCC pamphlet because they live in Sunset Hills. Then, about 15 minutes before my shift ended, a young person walked into the tent, passed the free candy bowl, and right up to me, I remember you. You were in this tent when I came to my first pride in 2016. You knew my friend who I had come with. You were kind. In 2016. The memory of their first pride still vivid enough to recognize the pastor who was putting on temporary rainbow tattoos in a church tent. A place of safety and an offer of love and affirmation. We can be a place where people are free from fear and thrive. So, let us cry out and lament. What about us? Thank you, Pink. When unjust laws and systems diminish and destroy. We are assured, after all, God will hear us just as God heard the cries of a little boy named Ishmael. Let us work confidently and with hope to change those laws and systems that diminish and destroy. We will not be alone in the work. God will be standing among us and within us as God promised the people in words spoken through the prophets. And again, by Jesus in Luke's gospel, one of my favorite verses, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, kingdom of God is among you, among you, within you. Let us get out there and do the work, and then let us celebrate with pride. Celebrate who and whose we are, all of us, every last one of us, just as we are, precious and beloved children. Let us stand in body or spirit and sing together from our binder number 153, God is holding your life.
A joy on Thursday, our grandson Franklin was born, and everybody's doing great. So. Oh my gosh, congratulations! <laughs> we'll be praying for you and your family, loving God. Yeah. On Thursday, the teacher that I work with in Ready Readers, Betty, is having triple bypass surgery, and I ask your prayers for her because those children need her energy. We'll be praying for Betty and for the children. Loving God. Yes. Other joys or concerns to be lifted up? I have one. Yeah, I thought, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Bob and Gigi would like your prayers. Bob had a procedure done on Friday. So prayers for Bob and Gigi. Loving God. Yeah. Other joys or concerns to be shared? Well, then let's take a moment to um, uh, pray uh, silently for those things that have been lifted to our attention and open our hearts and minds to receive the many things that have been left unspoken. And let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Creator, Lord in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to the day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For your word is the kingdom and the power. Well, 
How shall we join God's work in the world? I'm going to ask Debbie and Kevin and Jen and Darcy to come on up. And um, as they're coming up, I'm just going to explain what we're going to do here. We're going to make a reaffirmation of our uh, open and affirming statement. And so uh, I don't think we need to stand, but as we, uh, after we're done reading, I would just like everybody uh, to say amen as a sign of our recommitment. The avowed purposes of this congregation are to worship God, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and celebrate the sacraments, and to realize Christian fellowship and unity within this congregation and the church universal. Therefore, Peace United Church of Christ welcomes all who seek to experience the healing and unconditional grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ and invites each to participate and lead in our common life. Endeavoring to maintain the unity of the Holy Spirit in the bond of peace, we are open to and affirming of each child of God, recognizing that we are called to be as one reconciled body with members of every race, gender identity, ethnic origin, sexual orientation, class, age, and physical or mental health and ability. Relying on Christ's announcement of the approaching realm of God, we seek to increase among all love of God and neighbor. And together the congregation says, Just so you all know, that's not the end of it, right? Like now we just get out there and do the work. <laughs> okay, and Kevin's going to help us with some of that, so why don't you uh, come on up, Kevin? Uh, okay, first things first, and, and uh, that's just remember, uh, we are still gathering signatures to raise the minimum wage and guarantee paid sick leave for Missouri uh, minimum wage workers. Uh, and we'll be doing that for the next year, and I'm going to be saying it every Sunday, so get used to it. Um, <laughs> Um, I have petitions in the back that people are welcome to sign. Bob also has them. If you would like to take blank petitions with you, talk to either one of us. We have plenty of blank petitions in the church office that we can send you home with. Um, and you can get started uh, collecting signatures from your own friends and family. We're asking you to start with 10. That's it, 10. And then once you get those 10, we'll ask you to do 10 more. So just be prepared for that. Don't make photocopies of this uh, signature page. Right, right. You have to get the blank pages from us um, and, and not photocopy them. So that's that's the reminder. Um, so a couple of things uh, to keep in mind coming up. Uh, starting or next Sunday um, is uh, or next Sunday or next Tuesday actually is July fourth of course, and then the parade in West Groves is happening, is that on the 4th? Yes. It is on the 4th. Okay, thank you for the reminder. It's, uh, but the notice is in News and Notes. Um, Churches Together for Justice, which is our Wednesday night group that gathers, will be uh, again having an entry in the parade. We're looking for any and all people who want to participate to do so. Our theme is, again, voting rights uh, for all. Uh, but we also encourage folks to, uh, if you participate, wear your peace uh, t-shirts uh, or your pride t-shirts or anything that expresses how you feel about um, what we just read about the, the united body of Christ um, and, and everyone participating in, in God's kingdom. I um, want to remind folks that the next MCU monthly meeting is coming up July 11th. Um, that is from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at St. Louis Friends meeting house at uh, 1001 Park Avenue in the city of St. Louis. It, again, in news and notes, there's a registration link. Also, there's a registration link for participating in the uh, parade. Make sure to click on that and sign up for that if you'd like to do that. Also for MCU, put on your calendars July 25th. Uh, MCU is hosting a, another environmental, or their annual environmental justice uh, action, and this again will be virtual. Uh, last year we moved it uh, to virtual because it is just too hot during the summers these days. So you do not, we're not asking people to go and march across the bridge. Uh, you can sit in the comfort of your home, tune in over Zoom, and learn about actions that we all can take collectively with other brothers and sisters in Christ 
uh, to ensure a sustainable environment for future generations. And then the last thing I want to mention is that every Friday and Saturday, as you know, we have our, our Black Lives Matter vigil Friday evening uh, at 6 p.m. and then Sunday, or excuse me, Saturday at noon. Next Saturday, of course, the festival is happening out here uh, for Webster Groves. I think it would be a really good idea if we had more people join us on Saturday at noon. Uh, that tends to be a small number of people, um, but there will be a lot more people passing through, um, and it would be really good to have